Most of the time, I identify as disabled. There are times when I don't identify as disabled, often when I'm having what non-disabled folks might call a good day. That is, a day where I'm somehow able to act more like them. Actions that scholars like Simi Linton or Brenda Brueggemann might denote as passing. And then there are times when I didn't identify as disabled, even though I was identified in the passive as disabled by guidance counselors, school psychologists, former college roommates, the elementary school kids who like to beat me up at recess. My commonplace in those situations was to deny disability, denial being my choice self-defense mechanism. And then there are times when I didn't identify as disabled, but identified as different, because difference was cool, nouveau, and fashionable, all identity markers I'd previously been denied. The different slash diverse identity was, in a way, my entry point into a disabled identity. When I was able to accept that being autistic or being depressed or hyperlexic or anxious or selectively mute didn't involve my world coming to an end, when I was able to understand my so-called impairments in a happier sounding light, the label suddenly didn't seem so apocalyptic, so cringeworthy, so bully-inducing. This involves separating my own personal brand of autism from other brands of autism, an ableist and separatist move, what Leonard Davis describes as an exclusivist way of identifying, and what I call a shiny way of identifying. And then there are times when I identify as disabled, but others deny me that identity, or very loudly protest my position within that identity space. Professor-type people might utter things like, I think you've outgrown your autism, or I never think of you as disabled, or But you're nothing like Christopher from Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. To which I want to respond, I think you've outgrown your outfit, or I never think of you as a woman, or But you're nothing like that fictional teenage boy character who wishes everyone on Earth were dead but him. Some of these times are times when passing backfires, when my ability to play normal in short bursts causes others to think that my inability to play normal in long bursts is a result of personal laziness, bad parenting, big pharma and their host of invented disorders, or me playing the victim card. Because goodness knows that all disabled people carry one of those in their pockets. And many of these times are a result, I think, of others' ignorance. Only understanding autism or autistic people through characters such as Rain Man or Christopher from Curious Incident or Temple Grandin or that one autistic relative who, on the basis of being related to said person, defines what all autistic people should act like. 